Let's pray, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We praise your holy name, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you, Lord. Thank you for your wonderful Holy Spirit being here with us. I want to pray for each person, each family, Lord, who gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship, Lord. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. I want to pray for each person here today, Lord, that completely die to their will. I pray that you open up Lord, their spiritual ears and eyes so they can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me to allow the word to flow here this morning. That someone here that needs to be healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord, or born again, let them accept you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready here soon, by the end of September, going into what we always teach on here called the feast days. Um, and God put a message in my soul, and it's amazing how I got this. I want to explain to you how I actually got this. Um, first of all, the law. There's so much confusion on that in Scripture. The law in the Bible, you have the law of God. You have the law of Moses. You have the law of sin. You have the law of sin and death. You have the law of spirit and life. You have the law of faith, the law of righteousness, the law of Christ. So what's the law? And this is where people get so confused. Because over the years, people as Christians will say, well, I'm no longer under the law. I don't have nothing to do with the Old Testament no more. I'm just a Christian and I have Christ. Well, that sounds good, and that would be halfway correct, halfway, because most folks don't understand the law, what it's talking about. So what I want to do is to help you understand that. Now, here's how I got this message. First, I had a video sent to me and said, Greg, look at this video and tell me what you think about this video. And I watched it, and there was a lot of controversy about, about the law. Then I had a phone call from somebody asking almost the same question. So here I was getting ready, prepared, studying for it. And this past Monday, God always gives me confirmation this was the third one. So let me tell you the story. I was at home on Monday. I used when I take off. And I was cooking and doing things in the house. And I was watching the news about this hurricane stuff in the kitchen. And it went off. And then this show come on. I was getting ready to turn it. It's that show that comes on TV. I think it's called Blackish. You ever heard of that show? It comes on TV? Yes? Okay. Anyway, so I don't usually watch a lot of stuff like that, so I just was getting ready to turn it, and God said, no, watch this show. So I'm over doing the dishes and getting ready to cook, and I started watching it. And here's what happened in the show. This is because this was a confirmation of me, and I was like, okay, God, thank you for this. First of all, in the show, they were um, a girl who was getting ready to get married to another girl. And they was having a hard time with it within the family. The grandmother, who's supposed to be the Christian of the family, um, had a hard time with this. The mother and the father who lives in the family was kind of talking about it back and forth. And it started off talking about Republicans and Democrats in the show. So I'm watching this, just watching this. And they said, we can't be a Republican because we are okay with an abortion. And we do not teach our kids creationism. We teach evolution. And it was going through this, and this is in primetime TV, which is what's teaching our kids. I'm like, wow, that's bold. And as I'm watching it, then all of a sudden, the son goes to the grandmother and starts trying to get her to understand about this marriage that's getting ready to happen because she, didn't, she did, not, did not accept it. And... She said, the grandmother says, well, I guess it's my fault because I let her play with the boy next door and he was that way growing up. And then the son says, no, mom, that's not how you get that stuff. You're born with it. Now, they're, they're really putting this stuff out here on purpose. And then it goes deeper. And this is where I get offended. And this is where God really points it out to me about what I, I, should, I should be teaching on. The, the woman says, well, the good book, talking about the Bible, can't be wrong. In the book of Leviticus, it says this is an abomination before the Lord. Now, this is actually on TV, prime time. And then the, the boy points out, yeah, but that good book also says it's wrong to eat shellfish. 
She says, he says, so I guess the good book is wrong. She said, I guess so. Now, this is on national TV. And it offended me because of people tries to use what's an abomination to Almighty God versus eating shrimp or lobster. In other words, God's good book is nothing. It's nothing. It, in other words, it's back in the old wall. doesn't matter anyway. They said, we're not back in the 1950s. We, we've grown out of that kind of thing. Now, here's the problem with that. People are falling and listening to that kind of garbage today because they're not being taught in church what God's word really says. Are y'all with me? Now, this is why it's important to understand all those Christians out here who says, I'm only for the New Testament. That's fine. But if you're only for the New Covenant church and you don't know where it came from and you don't know what the Old Testament says really what the old law is and what's an abomination to God and what's not, then you're going to fall for anything. And that's why the last four weeks I've been talking to you and teaching you about how to rightly divide God's word and about the apostate church. That's why I've been showing that to you. So now we're saying all that, let's get into this to make sure you understand this because what I'm going to do now, what God showed me to do for the next three weeks is to teach on the law, the differences and what it means going into the feast days, which will help you understand what the feast days are. Because remember, the feast days are seven of them in God's word, and it's on God's biblical calendar, so we always bring that out. Um, first of all, let's kind of look at what the law is. The definition of what we, what we call the Torah. Who has heard of the Torah? Okay, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, and it's called the law. And it's, it's a powerful thing. It's a road map to life. Um, how many here knows that God's law is perfect? Okay, it is perfect, and it is good. But the problem is, most folks don't know how to break down that law. Okay, and I've watched it happen inside churches over and over, the, the argument of it. So we're going to break that down for you. Okay, so let's look at this. First go to Psalms 19 and look at verses 7 and 8. This is very powerful here. Psalms 19, verses 7 and 8. Now watch what it says. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. So all the Christians who says the law is no good and we're not supposed to live by it, well, you're wrong. The law is perfect. Okay? Now watch this. Converting the soul, underline that, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and enlightening the eyes. Now, the Torah or the law of God is broke down, though, into the law of God and the law of Moses. And there is a difference. And most folks don't want to examine that part, but they are. And I'm going to prove it to you in Scripture, not as a fighting thing, but because of just that show I just I showed you about. When you're sitting here and you have God's laws, Ten Commandments laid out, and God lays out what is an abomination to Him, and you're trying to throw that out in the garbage because you eat shellfish? Really? People do this kind of stuff because they don't understand God's Word. And that's how people of the world tries to get around their sin problem. They try to, try, try to get around what they want to do, and you can't do that. So let's look at what God's Word really says about this subject, amen? So Moses' law under the Torah is temporary. And it was set out for Israel, for the Jewish people, and it consisted of ceremonial laws, and it regulated the priesthood, sacrifices, rituals, meat and drink offerings. All these things foreshadowed, hear me, the cross. And here's the key thing. The law of Moses was added. The law of God was not. And I'm going to show you again. Is a Torah good? Yes. Is a Torah perfect? Yes. Is it holy? Yes. The Jews look at it as their Bible. Yes, I got that. It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's great. And I do too. I love it. But 
If you don't break it down and understand that there's a law of Moses and a law of God, and they all, it's kind of like this. You have God's law within the Torah, and then you have bylaws from the Moses, a law of Moses within the Torah for the law of God. Does that make any sense? In other words, and you'll see this going through story after story after story in all five books of the Bible. Okay, that's why it's important that we're going to show it to you in Scripture so you don't think I'm just making this stuff up. Later on, you can read Isaiah 53. I would advise if you know any Jewish person who don't believe in Jesus Christ to read this. And let me just pause right here and give this not an attack, it's just facts. Okay? You go look and talk to any Israelite, any Jewish person, Nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, they're taught as a child to hate Christianity, to hate Jesus Christ, to come against Christianity for a reason. Because they're taught that this Jesus fella is a Catholic God, is a Catholic religion, and we have the New Testament, and they've got the old, and that we're not supposed to, they think, go that direction. They have no understanding because they've been taught from the very beginning against this kind of garbage that Jesus Christ himself was Jewish and he was a rabbi and he came here to fulfill these feasts. And when they start reading this stuff, they get excited because the Jews are not taught this kind of stuff. That's why you hear me all the time going against like Catholicism and religion of man, not trying to attack a person, but you better hear me on this. No religion of man ever replaced what God started under his covenants. And that's why you've got to understand the law. If you don't know the law, you're going to make up your own religion and your own replacement theology. So Isaiah 53 in the Old Testament points forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. Y'all want to go deeper into this now? Go to Galatians 3. This is cool. Galatians 3. Galatians 3. And look at verses 16 through 19. Now watch what it says here. Because I want to show you the differences between the God's law and the law of Moses so you have an understanding of this. Galatians 3 verses 16 says this. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith not, and to the seeds of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is who? Christ. That's why Isaiah 53 points you to Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, and I'm the word law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promises of none effect. Now, are y'all getting a hold of this? Now, watch what it says here. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, them serveth the law? Question mark. It would add, it was added because of the transgression or sin until the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels and the hand of the mediator. What's it talking about here? This is going back to the law of Moses was added, not the Ten Commandments. Remember what was given on Mount Sinai. God did not come then on Mount Sinai on the feast day, hear me now, of Pentecost way back thousands of years ago with Moses with power and fire and give them the book of the law of Moses. They didn't do that. God did not do that then. He gave the law of God. And then because of transgression, because of sin, God had to take that law that he gave, make a covenant with Israel, and add in the law of Moses. And then on top of that, you have priests and in more laws and more ways and in more interpretations. Are y'all getting a hold of this? That's why it's important to know the difference between a shellfish eating or a lobster versus an abomination of God. That's why when I saw that on TV the other day, I thought, really, are you trying to, are you trying to compare those two? There's no, there's no comparison. 
that's folks who don't know God's law versus law law of Moses. Does that make any sense? Now let's go deep into this and see you can see this in Scripture for yourself. Now the ceremonial laws, the and the feast days, which is part of the Torah. Now y'all hear me teach on this every year about the seven feast days. The seven feast days was also given from the very beginning, not added. You say, well, how, where's that at? Well, that goes back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2 when God said he created, created day and night. Remember? It's, he created seasons. The word seasons is not spring, summer, winter, or fall. It goes back to God's ordinances, God's holy feast days, God's appointed times. Y'all with me? God already knew what was going to happen. He even knew he was going to add Moses' law as well. This is important to know the difference though so you don't have the world trying to come against you as Christians of not knowing what's been put inside you. Now watch this. This is so powerful. Um, go to Psalms 111. Psalms 111. Now I want you to watch this. The law of God is, is His Ten Commandments. And they are moral laws. It is not temporary and it stands forever. That's why when people sit here and says, well, God's law has been done away with. No, it hasn't. It's been fulfilled. And God's holy law, his commandments, was there from the beginning and will always be there to the very end. They stand for how long? Forever. Well, prove it, Greg. Okay, I will. Look at Psalms 111, verses 7 and 8. What does it say here? The works of his hands are verity, which means faithful, and judgment, which means just. His commandments are what? Sure, and they stand for how long? Fast for how long? Forever and ever. And are done in truth and uprightness. Look it up. That's the Ten Commandments. That's God's law. And they are there forever and ever and ever and ever because this is God's holy moral laws that he laid out. If we don't have God's laws that's made out, you can have no relationship with God or with your fellow man or know what's right and wrong. God put this there for a purpose and for a reason. Amen. Y'all getting a hold of this. Now, Satan, this is kind of, it's kind of go deeper to this. You can see the differences here very clearly in Daniel 9. Go to Daniel 9. Daniel 9 will show you the difference between God's law and Moses' law. Now, again, the whole point of this teaching is to help you understand what's coming up. Because, guys, listen, don't be one of these Christians that have pleads that says, I'm a Christian who don't need to know about the Old Testament. I don't know, I don't care about the Old Covenant. If you don't know about the Old Covenant, you, you freely can't walk in your New Covenant because you have no idea what's been given to you and why. Does that make any sense? I know a lot of Christians that way, they fall for anything under the New Covenant because a pastor told them or so-and-so says this or religion tells them this and they have no idea what's even been given to them. I want you to watch this. This is cool. Daniel 9, verses 10 and 11 says this. Here's the differences. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His laws. Watch. Which He set before us by His servants and the prophets. Yeah, all of Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing, now watch what it says here, that they might not obey the voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Very clear, you can see both laws, the law of God and the law of Moses. Are they both good? Yes, hallelujah. And is it part of the Torah? Yes, hallelujah. They both are. Are they wonderful? Yes, hallelujah. They both are. But that's a difference. That's why I want you to see the difference here. Most folks miss this. Because I see people today who's trying their best on their own <laughs> to live by the Torah. It's not possible. 
You on your own cannot live by the Torah by your own strength. Let's carry it deeper. Watch this now. Y'all getting it so far? So it's important to understand. Moses' law was added and it was temporary. But it's still part of the Torah. God's law, Ten Commandments, is forever, it lasts, and it's from the beginning to the end. It's always going to be there. Look at Romans 4, 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression, which means there is no sin. 1 John 3, 4 says this. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For the sin is the transgression of the law. Are y'all seeing that? Very clear. In other words, the whole point, the whole reason for me to show you this is the Torah and the Old Testament is a road map. The law of Moses, the law of God, all that is to point you to Jesus Christ who fulfilled that law that was perfect and it was not done away with, it was fulfilled. And a lot of Christians want to say it's done away with, it can't be done away with. It's perfect and it's forever. God's law is. The law of Moses is not. It's temporary and it's been fulfilled as well. Are y'all going to hold this? Now, make sure you understand this. If you can live by the Torah, first five books of the Bible, without Christ, you don't need Jesus Christ. Try it. You try going back under the law, the Torah, have the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses added to it temporarily, and you try your best to live that way and walk it out. It is completely impossible for any human being to do, and God knew that. That's the whole point of it. The whole point of it was to show you you can't do it and you need someone. You need a Savior. That's the whole point of it. So I see folks today who's under a new covenant as Christians who don't understand the difference and they try to go back and try to, uh, to live by the Torah on their own. You can live by it but not on your own. What do you think the Holy Ghost is for? When you get born again and the Holy Spirit is in you, he puts you on that road, on that map, and the Holy Spirit works it out and lives that through your life, which is part of that Torah. That's how you walk in the Spirit. Because the Torah is perfect. Let's go deeper into this. I want you to see this. Because I mean, most people try to either, either to dismiss this or they have no understanding of it. And I want to make sure you get a hold of this. Y'all want to go deeper into this? Now, here's a, here's a cool fact. Now, watch this right here. The Torah is called the way. The Torah is called the truth. How many here believes that? The Torah is also called the life. I agree 100% with that. But, but, big, big, huge but here, you don't have the power to live the way, the truth, or the life on your own. Okay, how religious do you think you are? You're not good enough. What does John 14, 6 say? Look at this. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, period. In other words, Jesus saying, I am the Torah. I am the law. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to get to pop of the Father? You have to go through me to do it. Does that make any sense? That's why this is so important to know the difference. Because if you're trying to live just by the law of Moses and not the law of God, you're going to miss it. Now you say, Greg, I still don't quite believe that. Well, let's kind of go deeper and let's show you what the Bible really says. Go to 2 Chronicles 35. This is where it gets cool. Now, this is interesting. Now, watch this now very carefully when I'm fixing to show you. In your spiritual mind, you'll start seeing what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Amen? Y'all ready to go deep here? All right. Second Chronicles 35, 12. This is talking about the law of Moses. Watch what it says. And they removed, watch this now, the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto the Lord, and it is written in the what? 
in the book of Moses and did uh, they with the oxen. Now, okay, how many here knows that there is a book of Moses? That's the first five books. Now, I want you to watch this. Look at what Exodus 31, verses 18 says. And he gave unto Moses, this is to my God, gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of the communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables or translated tablets of the testimony. The tables are tablets of what? Stone written with the finger of who? God. God did not write on the stone tablets the law of Moses. He wrote the law of God. Moses wrote in a book all the other things that God told him to write down. It's all part of the Torah. It's all the law. It's all wonderful and great, but you've got to separate the difference. What's an abomination to God is not the same as any lobster. I'm sorry. But folks do this. They try to put it together. You can't do that. There's, there, there's a difference here. Y'all seen this, anybody? Let's go deeper. I'm just trying to show you what the God, Bible really has to say about it so you can get a hold of this. Now, uh, Exodus 32, 16 even, even adds to this. Look at what it says. And the tablets or tables were who? The work of God. And the writing was the writing of God. Graven upon the tablets or tables. God himself did that. That's the law of God. Now, let's go deeper. Look at the law of Moses. Go over to Deuteronomy 31. Now, this, is, this is where it gets pretty cool here. Keep in mind the law. How many of you have ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? How many of you have ever heard of Indiana Jones? <laughs> the movie. Anybody seen that? Okay. If, if you know anything about the Ark of the Covenant and the power that was behind that Ark and that Covenant and what God did, this will start making more sense to you when I'm fixing to show you here. Okay? Go watch the movie. Because when they start opening up that lid and those, those who's not supposed to touch it and try to touch it, they die quickly. Okay? Because of what's inside of it. Now watch this right here. This is pretty cool. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 verses 26. This is the law of Moses. Now watch what it says. Verses uh, 26. He says, Take this book of the law. This is the law of Moses. Watch. And put it in the side around the word of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God that it may be therefore a witness against thee. Notice what it did not say. It did not say take the book of the law of Moses and put it inside the ark. It didn't say that. What does it say? Put it in the side of. Another translation from Hebrew, and you can go back and look this up, a complete Jewish Bible says it like this. Take the book of Moses, the Torah, and put it next to the ark with the covenant of Adonai, your God. Are you going to hold this? The book of Moses was not placed in the ark, but on the side of the ark. Ding, 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 ding. Now watch that. I'm trying to get you to see something here. There's a reason for that. Watch. Let's go. Are y'all getting a hold of it so far? Look at the law of God. Exodus 40, 20 says this. And he took and put the testimony, which is the Ten Commandments, stone tablets, into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above and upon the ark. Now why am I showing you the difference between both here? It's very important because one was written by God and put into the ark and one was written by Moses, instructed by God and put into the side of the ark or next to the ark. Y'all getting a hold of this? Instructed by God. So one's on the inside of the ark and one's on the side of the ark. Does it make any sense? So they're not the same. They're still part. It's kind of like you have a family, okay? 
like me, the Drakes. But in my family, I have a wife, a daughter, and a son. We're still the Drakes, but we're separate. Me as a person, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a pastor. Does that make any sense? Same person, but different functions. The law is the law. It's great, it's wonderful, it's, the, it's a Torah, yes. But it's broke down in different, different distinctions on purpose. Because one's written by God's finger and one's written by Moses, instructed by God. Now notice, the one written by God is not touched. You can't add to or take away from. One by Moses, you'll see over a period of time where your different priest is adding to and taking away and different interpretations of. How many of you have ever heard of jot and tittles? It's in Scripture. We're going to get into that later on later. Do you know that the Hebrew language and the Hebrew alphabet is so complex, even more than the Asian complexness of, of their alphabet, that they had to have scribes and Pharisees even over the thousands of years for all the different Jews and priests having to come back to Jerusalem looking at this text and looking at every jot and tittle, every little, every little small dot has different meanings. The alphabet has different phrases and meanings and God gave that language over to the Hebrew people on purpose and he makes a comment how important that law is and how great it is and not even one jot or tittle shall be taken away until it's all been fulfilled. You're going to hold this. It's, it's great, it's important, but you've got to know the difference here. If not, you'll have some crazy folks out here on TV trying to mock God and mock his, quote, good book and say it's inaccurate and how dumb it is because we're sitting here saying you can't eat lobster or shrimp versus the abominations that God laid in his scripture. That's how people don't understand God's word. Does that make any sense? We call it outdated. It's not outdated. It's because you don't understand it. And the world system don't understand it. And, and, and the apostate church is not going to understand it. And you're not supposed to. God only going to give a spiritual understanding to those who seek after his truth and wants understanding. And God will open up your spiritual eyes to truth. But his word's not going to change because of we don't like it. We just have to, you, just have to, you just have to get over ourselves. Because God's word is God's word. How, how about that? Amen? Y'all do do believe that. So why is this important? Hebrews 10, 16, look at this. Hebrews 10, 16. So we'll look how powerful this right here is. Now watch. He tells Israel, this is the covenant that I will make with them. Now here it's not talking about you at first. It's talking about them. Those people who set out who he gave the Ten Commandments to, he gave the law of Moses to, he gave the whole Torah to, they said, my people, and you'll see, guys, it's so cool, as you're reading through the Old Testament, you'll see them get God's law, yes, we can do it, and you can't. And as they mess up, God adds more of Moses' law to it to help them to understand what his law is. And they mess up again, and they mess up again, and they're redeemed back and forth and back and forth. You'll see the stories going over and over and over and over and over, and the whole way is pointing to someone. And their rituals, and their feast days, and all the things they had to use as blood sacrifices, all is pointing to someone. Look at what it says in Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws... Underline this, into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Read later Jeremiah 31 through 31 through 34. It's referring back to that which is pointing to Jesus Christ. He's not saying, Jews, I'm going to write the law of Moses into your hearts that you can never eat a lobster or you can never eat a shrimp or you're going to bust hell wide open. That's not what he put inside there. No, what he put inside the temple was God's law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. They are a difference. Does it make any sense? It's quiet. Are y'all getting hold of this? That's why it's important to know the difference. God put his laws in their hearts, not, loads, not, not, not the law of Moses. Even though loads, the law of Moses was good, it was wonderful, 
you'll see Jesus Christ himself on the earth in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John never going against the law of his Father God because he is God himself. But he's always talking to the scribes and Pharisees and religious folks of that day who was more involved in the law of Moses and washing of your hands and keeping the Sabbath and all this kind of stuff they're adding to it. You can't heal on, on, on the Sabbath day and all these things. He, he sits here and says, you're looking for life in the scriptures. You think you have them, but it's pointing to me, he says. They, don't, they, they missed it because their function was more of the law of Moses than the law of God. Does that make any sense to anybody? So read that later. Remember, God's law is perfect, but one thing he did not do is say, in your hearts, I'm going to write a new covenant of dietary and land laws inside you. No, he didn't do that. God, li listen, that was temporary and it was fulfilled. Now God has Israel's back. He knows what's going on, what's been spoken. Even folks right now who tries to come against Israel, God's already spoken it and what he has already spoken will come to pass. Hallelujah. But if you get born again inside, the, inside you, this new covenant, God's not putting a new dietary law. Now listen to me. I think it's wonderful if you want to follow God's dietary laws, you'll be blessed by it. If you don't want to go eat pork and pigs and, and shrimp and lobsters, go look it up. You'll see why. Okay, God, you want exactly what he's doing there. Okay, be kosher if you want to. All that's great. But God did not put that inside your heart as a born-again believer. He put his Ten Commandments. Does that make any sense? And all this will help you understand as we're going through, getting ready to go through the New Testament. I'm going to stop right here for today because there's so much to this. But I hope you got some understanding here of the law of God and the law of Moses and what was put in the ark and what was put inside of the ark on the side of it or next to the ark because God's laws is put inside you, hallelujah, because where is his spirit at now? You know how powerful this was. If anybody tried to open up that ark and get a hold of that God's power, you'd die. But now under a new covenant, where's that power at right now? It's inside of us. And I can have loads, Moses' law on the side of me. And that's great. I can look back to it and see what all happened and why. That's wonderful. But God's dietary laws and land laws and rituals is not there. That's why in the feast days, I don't tell you to go out here and try to, try, to, try, to, try to become a natural born Jew again and do all the rituals. I try to show you what they're fulfilled and how Christ fulfilled them and why. Does it make any sense? Because going out here in a booth and sending out here under the stars will not get you no more closer to God than knowing that he dwells inside me right now. But it is good to understand what the feast days are, what they mean, what the laws mean, because my Christ fulfilled them and gave me the same promise he gave to Abraham and now is inside me, hallelujah. That same law that was perfect is inside me. The only difference was is I didn't have to go through all the agony to get it. He did it for me. Make any sense? More on this next week. <laughs> Can we stand to our feet? I hope you're getting a hold of this. It's so, so powerful. Don't ever walk around and say, I can't understand all this. You can. The Spirit will give it to you. Revelation. It's not hard to see. Scripture speaks for itself. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I want to give you an opportunity, though. I always do this. As we get ready to close, before we go eat and everything, if you're here today and you're not born again, then this is your time to get born again. I can't save you. The Spirit of God will draw you. The Spirit is here. The Word's being preached. Christ made a way. So if you want to be born again, now it's time, time, time to come. Be saved. Be changed. If you're here today, you need to be healed or set free or, deli or delivered from anything. There's nothing stopping you. He's, he's, he's done paid the price for all that. Amen? So what's your need today? There's nothing too big for God. What's your need? Trust Him. Be obedient to Him. Need a prayer answered? Pray. Trust Him. Your whole life.
life to be able to walk. God, don't well, you get the peace and joy on the inside of knowing what Christ did for you? It makes life a whole lot easier. I'm not saying you're not going to have any problems because you will. But he'll be with you through your problems. Amen? So what's your need today? Okay. I'm going to close right here. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Rick, if you don't mind, close us in prayer and go ahead and bless our food as well. Now, when we get finished, y'all come back and eat with us and fellowship and talk.